Okay, so let's back up a little bit. So if you've watched me in my videos, you've probably seen me do a lot of things like, so let's take a look at empty cars. You've probably seen me doing stuff like empty cars, group by, I don't know, AM and then a nest. So this creates a table grouped by empty car with a new column called data, which is a list column. Okay, so each element it contains one table and then what you can do once you have this, you can do stuff like you can add a new column called, for example, head of the data frame, which is simply, um, so the column was data and you call the function head on it. Okay, and then what you get is you get this new column with here the head of this data frame. Okay. Um, and, you know, then maybe let's take a look. If I pull it out, I get the head of um, these two data frames. So grouped. So this is for AM equals one. This is for AM equals zero. So I if in I've essentially here uh, wrote a loop. Basically, I wrote a loop implicitly by grouping and nesting. By the way, I think there is like a group nest function now <coughs> included in the latest version of dplyr, which I guess uh, makes it uh, faster to write. You just need to use group nest. Let's try it. I think it's group nest. And but the idea, yeah, it's group nest. Let's see if this works like that. Maybe I can just copy this. Seems to, yeah, that seems to be the case. Okay, so group nest instead of group by nest. It's, it's the same. So this is essentially a loop, but instead of having to think about, you know, um, creating some kind of structure to hold my data and then, uh, you know, somehow needing to loop over am and then say well if this is uh, if am equals one then you know put the data there if am equals zero put it there and then take the head of it or whatever you would need to do uh, it would be much more complex so that's maybe let me move this a little bit yeah i think like this so this would be much more complex if i would write a loop instead of doing that so this is something that i think is is quite powerful and that I've, i have been using uh, a lot in my in my code in my videos etc and now maybe yeah now i'm centered so in the last two videos i've been playing around this thing and loops uh, or rather not loops rather loops, uh, implicit loops, let's call them like that. Basically, the loop is here. It's basically the map function, okay? I've been playing with that, and there was one problem then that uh, one of you guys uh, asked me about is, okay, what happens if you use this trick and you end up with basically a huge data frame, right? So this can happen if, let me zoom in, if, for example, you have as I have here, uh, many, many files, okay, 15,000 files. So those are 15,000 Excel files that I want to read without writing a loop and that I want to, to work on, okay? So you can use the trick that I just showed you before uh, in a very similar way, uh, basically, uh, instead of, you know, doing this group by thing, etc. and nest, what you can do is you start by creating a data frame of paths. So here I have 1000, maybe let's shorten that a little bit. Let's go with just 100, just that it goes a little bit faster. So now I have 100 uh, paths and now I can do the, the, the same trick as before, mutate map, because inside mutate, you can use any function, okay? It doesn't matter what the function does. You can use any function as long as that function is able to do something with this input. So in this case, I have pass. So what the function needs to do is, uh, well, to read in the data that is behind this path, right? Or maybe at the end of this path, I guess. So what I will do is exactly that. I will map, I will mutate map 
um, this function that reads in the Excel files and then I will do some computations on it okay however however I do not want to read all the data at once because this is exactly the problem that um, uh, Mike Parrott so one of the uh, person's viewers that asked the question in a, in a comment said well but you know what happens if if basically this data set gets very huge and then on top of it you add computations aren't you going to run out of memory and this made me think okay that's a very good point how can we avoid that so instead of calling xlsx directly i quote it so this is what i did in the previous video so if this looks a bit um, confusing for you watch the previous video i'm going to link it below after I've done this video, I continued experimenting and I realized something. Um, I quote this expression, right? And, and then what the advantage of doing that is that when, then I, when I then call a function, in this case I used nrow, on, on this quoted um, Excel files, okay? What happens here is that the file gets re read I get my n rows, then the I guess the garbage collector gets called and, and the Excel file gets uh, I mean you, you, it's not it's not kept in memory so your RAM does not increase and then this is done on the next one etc etc so you can basically treat a huge amount of files without running out of memory because the memory that is used is only what is needed to treat one particular file at a time exactly as if you would write a loop however i thought about the problem what happens if i you know i need to do more than one i, I need to do more than one computation i need n rows and n calls let's see what happens so let's also time it so this is going to read in my 100 files well and quote them and it's only going to read them in whenever I need here this function and this is uh, eval tidy that is going to instantiate the data frame again if you're not following watch the previous video because there I explain what's what's happening and maybe also watch the video before that I guess this took seven seconds okay these were 100 files if we take a look at the result if we take a look at the result we have now maybe let me move this a little bit we have now my paths, data frames, quoted data frames. So these are quotures, and then we have my integers. So my n rows and my n calls. We're happy with that. However, however, the problem with this is that this evaluates the data frame once. So it reads in the data frame once, and this reads it again. So let's just try one computation, and you will see that it's going to take half the time so before it was seven seconds this took three seconds okay and this is because we're reading at each um, function here we read in the data set twice so at each so for 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 both columns okay we we read in here we read in the data set and here we read it again that's obviously something that we want to avoid because we don't want imagine if we have to do 10 things or 15 things we we don't want to read in the data 15 times okay so the way to avoid that, the, to avoid, to avoid uh, that, is to write a function that does what you want, and call that function instead. And so this function, I called it my function, takes as an argument a quotient, so yeah, I called it x, evaluates that quotient once, and then it returns a table, okay, where for each of the operations I want. I will get one column. So in this case, I will get one column for the rows and I will get one column for the amount of columns. And of course, I could add stuff. I could add here yeah, a third column, a fourth column, etc. And this returns a table and it's quite important because you're going to see why. Now the question is, how do I call? Okay, how do I call this function? How do I apply, the, apply this function to my table? Well, just like any other function, you just mutate and map they, uh, your function over the list of data frames that's it so the list of data frames is this column this column is called data frames which contains the quotures okay contains the quotures and you just map over it and that's it 
Okay, so let's let's uh, let's try. So this is this thing. Let's see how long it takes. Uh, there was a problem. My funk not found. Yeah, that's because I did not read it in. So it should take a little bit more. Yeah, three. So it read the data in once, and then it computed n call and n uh, rows very quickly. And of course, it could be arbitrarily complex stuff. It doesn't matter. So let me move my face a little bit over here. So we have uh, n rows and n calls. So those are the ones from before, okay? And now we have n rows and n calls. This is the function that I I I, uh, I run now, which returns a table of um, of size, so two, one row, two columns, okay? So let's actually just before I continue, let's just let's just reread my axles, okay? Just to get rid of the previous columns that I don't need now. Let's just get reread of that. Great. Uh, 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 this I don't even think that uh, those things I do. This is old code. Just ignore it. Let's look again at our data. And again, I want to stress the fact, okay, so it's not, again, watch the previous video, but this this method, what I'm doing here with disclosures, has the huge advantage that you do not run out of memory. Because once you're done treating one data frame, it gets in the garbage and the next data frame gets used, okay? So this does not... Uh, eat up all your memory, whereas if you would not use closures, so if you would re read in all the data, and if instead of having a list of closures, you had a list of data frames, you could potentially run out of memory. If, if for example, if I do that for my 15,000 Excel files, I would definitely run out. i sure I would run out of memory. Okay. So um, this is a neat trick. Uh, now let's, okay, so, sorry. So we have these tables. Now, how do I get to the data? Very easily. There's a very nice function for that called unnest, and I just need to unnest. Uh, is it calls? Yeah, I just need to unnest and rows and n calls. And what this does, I think it's beautiful. It basically pivots the data frame. So this this data frame that was here gets, let's say, pivoted, and the columns that were inside now become columns of my data frame. So now, for each of these data frames, I have my n rows and my n columns. And again, this could be, no, this is a very simple example, this could be arbitrarily complex. This could be a function, instead of counting rows and of counting columns, it could run uh, some kind of uh, statistical model, as complex as you need it to be. It could... Uh, create some plots, it could do whatever. So, um, let's now just to illustrate the point further, let's not, let's use all the data and let's see what happens. Okay, so I take this uh, and now I, uh, yeah, I run, well, I run this thing, okay. So now this is running over my 15,000 Excel files from the infamous and run corpus if you take a look at my um, at my system monitor my ram is not moving i'm at t i'm at two gigabytes and it's not moving and again why because one data frame gets read the columns the number of columns and number of rows gets computed it ca then it gets into the garbage and then the next data frame gets read etc etc and this is because this is because I don't have, well now now my, my Emacs is, uh, this can happen if you're running very um, CPU intensive uh, computations, that Emacs just completely stops until, um, until it's running, until it's finished running. But um, if, if, uh, if you look at what I had before, those were closures. So the closures gets evaluated with the tidy eval command and then um, the computations get done. So if you're not following, Watch the previous video. This was just to illustrate um, further how you could um, write the functions that, that, that would 
that would compute everything you need to be so it would evaluate the data set only once so this video was more to illustrate this point i'm going to write a blog post about this because i think it's a bit complex so i'm going to write a, a blog post where i take it again step by step and um, i think it will make also easier to follow but um, I really, I, I think this is a really neat trick. So I'm 2.3 now because of course, depending on the data frame, if it's a huge one, if it's a huge Excel sheet, it will take a little bit more memory, etc. But um, if I don't, so let's, you know, let's, uh, let's kill R. If I don't quote, okay, if I read in my data, um, no, it's, if I, if I read in my data, uh, Oh, no, this is not going to work because I have to run these things first because I killed R. Uh, yes. So now it's reading in all the data. Okay. Now it's reading in all the data. And um, you see my RAM increasing. Um, it's already at 2.3 and it, it'll keep increasing un until I will uh, very likely run out of memory because. As I said, those are 15,000 uh, Excel sheets. So again, I will write a blog post where I will, I think, re-explain that from scratch. But I really think this is uh, a very neat trick. So I'm quite happy to have uh, to have thought about using quotures. And um, I must say that I wasn't expecting the results to be so interesting, but uh, I, I'm quite happy with that. So I think this is something that I will definitely include in my uh, my toolbox. So yeah, you see, it's it keeps increasing, increasing. We're already at four. So uh, okay. So I hope you enjoyed. So these three videos were kind of uh, unusual, a bit experimental because I didn't really have a script for them. It was more like as I was going, I wanted to uh, share the results with you, also get some reactions about that. Now I think I have enough um, enough. Um, I don't say. I don't know how you say that in, in English. In French, you would say de la matière, I, enough stuff to write uh, a blog post. So I think this is what I'm going to do, where I will re-explain everything uh, with code examples, etc. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed and uh, have a nice evening.